In this video, I'm going to review the Global Swiss Learning website, stack it against the competition, and hopefully inspire you to create better web designs and make more money by selling higher quality websites. So if you want to know whether this website passes my truly professional website test assessment, make sure you watch until the end when I will reveal its grade and income potential. Hello, I'm your host Caicinho, I'm the Digital Alchemist, and in this new series, the goal here is not to focus on flashy websites that require an army of designers and developers to build. Nope. But instead, the idea is to focus on one website design that could be created by one single person or by a very small team. And this in order to inspire you and help you assess the quality and potential income of a website. So today I'm going to focus on the Global Swiss Learning website. So I found this website on the awards website and it's this one right here. And just so we're on the same page, here is how I'm going to proceed. I will assess this website over four topics. First impressions, identity, content and technical. Each topic will be noted on 5 points and the final assessment will be noted on 20 points. Now please know that this is my subjective assessment and not the universal truth, but I've been creating websites for a living for many years and I have quite some experience doing that. So let's start with the first impressions that can be broken down into desktop, mobile, tablet and versus the competition. Okay, so let's start with my first impressions on the desktop. Well, the first impression was really good, but I did not get the wow effect, to be honest. But the thing is, and I've explained that in my videos about current web design trends, a lot of the awards, uh, awarded websites, in my opinion, they got too many trends. It's all over the place. It's asymmetrical design with 20,000 fonts and I just don't like it. So when I see a clean website like this, I instantly like it. That's just me, maybe. Let me know in the comments. But uh, first impression was good. And as I start scrolling, of course, the name of the website is Swiss Global Learning or Global Swiss Learning, but they're really using the Swiss design you know and i know it's cliche but this is the typical uh swiss design so i quite like that a lot of white space um a lot of lines and you know blocky design i just like it but if you do it you know with small padding and uh and margins then it's going to look outdated whereas here they're using some of the trends we see that a little bit later in this video so make sure you stay until the end but all in all, I really like uh, the way they implemented the Swiss design style. Next, the tablet version. So the tablet version looks really good also. But something that really got me confused here on top is the double uh, hamburger icon. We'll talk about that later in the video when we talk about the navigation. But yeah, I was a bit confused by that. Next, the mobile version, which is probably the version that most people are going to see. We have one hamburger icon here. And for the rest, it works really well with the Swiss design, with the also horizontal scrolling, because of course you got less screen real estate. So they, they're resorting to that a lot of times on the website. It looks super clean. Uh, the padding around the content is more than enough. All in all, it looks really good. So a very good first impression on the mobile. Next, let's take a look at the competition. So I went to Google and opened a few of the competitors website. So as you can see, this looks really uh, corporate, really generic website. Then we get this one that's even more generic. This one, it's, you know, I'm lacking a term here. It's really raw. It's from Cornell University. And then you got this one, really generic and a bit boring if I'm being totally honest. And talking about boring, what about this one? So in comparison, the Global Swiss Learning website looks really beautiful. All the pages got this consistency and it feels way more modern and premium than the ones I just show you with the competition. So for all these reasons, for the first impressions, I'm going to give it a grade of four out of five. Okay, next let's move on to the identity, which can be broken down into the logo, the colors, the fonts, and the style versus the target. Okay, so first let's talk about the logo. So this is their logo. Now, to be honest, I'm not a fan of this logo. It's way too big and bulky in my opinion. Now, if you just use the arrow here, it's probably recognizable. You get a little plus for the Swiss flag, I guess. But when it's at, you know, this um, size, you can't really see it. And as a favicon or on a pencil, you're not gonna see any of this. So my opinion could do better for the logo 
Now the thing is the rest is really beautiful for the rest of the identity in my opinion. So next let's talk about the color palette and you can see these are the main colors. Of course also with the white and then the dark gray for the titles but it works really well for the accents for for example when you're on this page you see methodology you see the call to action it works really well and then here the combination of these two colors yeah it's really beautiful in my opinion next let's talk about the font so we got this font here niveau grotesque let's check this one navigation same thing this one here same thing on the buttons paragraph and basically we continue with this trend which i really love to have just one font as you may know it's always advised to have a maximum of three fonts two is better but i think the last three four or five websites that i reviewed had only one font and these are all premium websites so i hope that can help you in your future web designs Next, let's talk about the style versus the target. And if we go to the home page, it says we create equal opportunities by enabling Premier Swiss vocational education worldwide. Basically, they want to give the high standard level of the Swiss education to the rest of the world. And in that perspective, the image that they convey is really on par with Swiss um, quality. Basically, when you look at the, the fonts, you look at the images you look at the way the website is set and also the fact that it's targeting students students need to be organized i mean if you're going to give some education you want people to at the end of their education they should be organized and this website looks well organized and premium so my opinion it really works for the style versus the target so for all these reasons for the identity i'm going to give it a grade of four out of five Okay, next, let's move on to the content topic, which can be broken down into navigation, quantity, quality, and funnel. Okay, so let's start with the navigation. And as you can see, when I click on the hamburger icon, we get this beautiful and clean navigation uh, with, here we have in the first tier, our solutions about GSL, schools and courses. I mean, when you scan it, you see three main columns, three elements, and then you get the sub elements. And as you may know, it's always advised to have a maximum of seven elements in the navigation for each tier. Why? Just because the short-term memory doesn't like more than seven elements. Don't ask me why, but you can't really cope with more. So here we got three at the first level, sorry, like this. Three here, three columns, and then here we got one, two, three, four, five, so it works. Here we got four, here we got two. So kudos to them, they really respect it. So it's easy to scan and know where you wanna go on the website. Now, one funny thing is that on top of the hamburger icon that you see here, you can also access the navigation here as a traditional navigation with a drop down menu. Now, in my case, that can be a bit confusing, but maybe it's just me. Maybe they did some tests and maybe it works well like this. Kind of the best of both worlds, but at the same time, why? So, not really sure about that, but both navigations are beautiful. Okay, now for the navigation on the tablet. As you can see, we get this full screen navigation. And then we got this one here. So it doesn't really make sense. It's the same navigation, but a more traditional style, uh, drop down style. I don't really get it. Like, especially here on this page, you can't really see it. So did they forget? Uh, I'm not really sure. You, you can't see it here. So let me go back to Global Swiss Learning homepage. And yeah, so this is our uh, regular drop down, and this is the full screen navigation. Plus, there is some overlapping. So, I think for the tablet version, even though the rest of the version is really good, but for the navigation itself, could be better. Now, let's take a look at the mobile navigation here. So, here we only get this navigation, the drop down navigation, and not the full screen navigation. So, initially, I was like, why? It doesn't really make sense. It would make more sense to have the uh, full screen navigation, but maybe because there are so many sub elements that, you know, they wanted to use it this way. But then again, they could have used the full screen navigation with some drop down elements. So not really sure about the navigation here, but it looks beautiful. Next, let's talk about the amount of content on this website. And if we take a look, we got roughly about what, five, nine, 11 pages here. Plus we got some more pages like the media kit and some other pages that you'll find here at the bottom in the footer. So all in all, it must be around 20 pages of content. And on each page, there is quite some content, but it's well organized. So it doesn't feel like 
uh, there is too much like this page for example there isn't too much content now let's go on this one as you can see we have a lot of elements but not too much he, he doesn't feel like you're never gonna get to the end of the page so and like I mentioned repeating myself but it's very well organized next let's talk about the quality of the content and as you can see the pictures are beautiful uh, it's a good quality they don't feel too heavy but at the same time quality is just good videos also you can see that it was made by professionals and basically just like my first impression it really feels premium the text is well written but you would expect no less from a uh, an education uh, service or company so yeah all in all very good quality of content next let's talk about funnels or calls to action and as you can see from the get-go it's telling you okay click here for our solutions and then you when you hover over you see this interaction we'll talk about that in a moment here we got many more calls to action but well, maybe too many but at least they don't use the accent color so you know it doesn't scream okay i'm important what's important is here our solutions and then as you scroll down as i mentioned before the color palette makes it so that because there's a lot of white space when you land on that part of the page you notice the call to action immediately so throughout the website there are more than enough calls to action so really well done so for all these reasons for the content i'm going to give it a grade of four out of five okay next let's move on to the technical side of things which can be broken down into speed dynamism interactions and the use of trends okay so let's start with the speed and let me go in the navigation click on one page and as you can see it's pretty fast it's not the fastest of website but it's not slow uh, either let me go to another page let's, this time let's use the full screen navigation and let's go to swiss chefs association so i had not visited this page before and as you can see it's loading quite fast now bear in mind i always explain this but some companies are going to use a cdn to optimize their website so either they invest in a global cdn so they get remote clones of the website uh, served all over the the planet or sometimes when it's just a local company they're gonna uh, invest in local cdn so if they're in france they're gonna invest in a cdn for french customers but here it's swiss it's global swiss learning so my guess is that they're a global service and company so it makes sense that it, they would have a global cdn next let's talk about dynamism or in other words does the website feel alive or flat well we get just a few subtle animation as you saw here with the titles but for the rest not many animations it feels a bit flat sometimes but maybe that's the swiss style but at least they got those titles appearing as i scroll so not totally flat but yeah it could do a little bit better in terms of dynamism okay next let's talk about interactions as you may know interactions are interesting because you want the visitor to uh, commit to a micro interaction and that's going to be easier in the long run when you're trying to get them to click on a call to action because they already interacted with your website and here you got some interactions like when i hover over the names of um yeah the employees i guess well you can see the image changes on the left hand side which is also one of the trends uh this specific effect but here in this case it's really the micro interaction also we get those interactions on some of the call to actions i don't know if i can find one here of course i can let me go back to the home page but here when i hover over the button you can see let me make this bigger when i hover over the button you can see the hover state changes so tiny interactions but enough next let's talk about the use of trends and we're not talking about being a fashion victim and putting all the trends on the same page at the same time we're talking about implementing trends the smart way one of the trends is the gigantic fonts and um, here it works really well beautiful font we got a lot of white space so it looks super clean um, they don't really use asymmetrical design except at a few spots on the website but you know swiss design is all about symmetrical design so that kind of makes sense actually totally makes sense so they are really consistent with their identity now that being said as i mentioned on some of the pages you find some asymmetrical design like here 
and then you find also one of these trends when you hover over the element you see a picture appearing but at least here it makes sense and all the pictures they have the same size and you know they are appearing at the same spot whereas on some of the uh, the new trends it's sometimes random images with different sizes sometimes as tiny as something like this i don't know if you can see but something really tiny then it's giant then it's on the left on the right hand side at least here it's well organized swiss style so for all these reasons for technical i'm going to give it a grade of four out of five so at the time of reviewing this website when we add all the grades it adds up to 16 out of 20 which is a very good grade knowing that i consider anything 14 and above a professional website that you can sell for a higher than average price okay now let's talk about income potential now a little disclaimer here when we talk about income potential of course where you live really matters Do you live in switzerland or in bangladesh in the united states of america or in romania but if you factor in the amount of content the super clean and minimal design as well as the multilingual versions well you could probably sell this website between 10 and 50k depending on your sales skills here i'm talking in dollars or it could be euro depending on the conversion rate but don't forget some people would never be able to sell this website for more than 500 bucks that would be the same quality of course but they wouldn't be able to sell more than 500 bucks while others would sell it for a minimum of 100k so it really depends on your sales skills and like we saw a moment ago it also depends on your location because five thousand dollars isn't the same thing in los angeles and in bangkok that's the hard truth but i'm just giving you an average income potential now of course whether you create this website in six weeks three months six months or a year is also going to determine if it's profitable or not but let's say that this website did cost between 10k and 50k well my guess is that the client would be more than happy with the results especially when you stack it against some of the competition now how would i build it well it doesn't really matter if you outsource the development hand code it yourself or use wordpress clients only care about end results and return on investment now personally i think i could build something similar with wordpress elementor pro affiliate link in the description plus probably jet engine and wp rockets just to give you an idea of the main plugins i would be using but of course you could build this with bricks with gutenberg or with the builder that you are most efficient with at the end of the day they are just tools what matters is the end result okay so today we reviewed an education company's website but which type of industry's website would you like me to review next please let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this video and my work please give it a thumbs up because it's really gonna help the channel and it doesn't cost you a dime and if you want more web design goodness consider subscribing and smashing the notification bell so that you don't miss anything i hope that this video will help you become a better web designer and sell higher end websites so i'll see you in the next one and don't forget i'm trying to build the content i wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe. Cut.